I grew up in Iran. I lived in Iran during the revolution and eight years war. Um, each evening during war, I seen these documentary films in Iranian TV. I lost friends. I lost teachers. I lost some member of families in this war front. And I think today, after this whole year, uh, it's good to think what happened, really, to our society. And if today I'm going to talk about Morteza Avini, who was one of the key ideological person of war documentary films in Iran, um, it doesn't mean I agree with him or I'm against him. I, I'm just going to learn about him and his ideology as I think somehow he's unique in the way that he tried to present to his audience the war fronts. Uh, I can say this is first time that we translate the handwritings of Morteza Avini. As Nadir Talibzadeh told you, he wrote many things uh, in Persian, but it's very, very difficult to translate you know, the, something that he wrote because it's really mystical and he used many uh, religious mystical things. Uh, for translate some terms here, uh, I asked a good friend of mine, Professor Rob Gleave, to help me to translate you know, mystical and Islamic terms, and he told me, it's really difficult for me either to understand what it means. So, before reading the text, I want to excuse you first for my bad French accent, and secondly, if there are the terms technical and religious term that uh, is quite difficult. Most of the texts are quotations from Morteza directly by himself. The first part is about his life and his idea about technical production of Revite Fat series. And second part about his ideology about uh, making uh, film documentaries about war and war fronts and martyrs. Said Morteza Avini was born in Iran in 1947 in Shahrei, situated in the south of Tehran. Prior to Iran, Iran's Islamic Revolution, his interest lay primarily in Persian literature and poetry. Concerning his life, and can you have images? Sorry. Concerning his life and ideology before the revolution, he says, don't think that I'm not familiar with intellectuals' mode of life and thinking. For many years, I went to the intellectual meetings and art galleries and listened to Western classical music. To present myself as an intellectual, I had an intellectual beard and moustache like Nietzsche and kept the book of Herbert Marcus, One Dimensional on Man. Although I had not had time to read it at that period, in my hand, in such a way that everybody could see it and say, wow, he's an intellectual. Although Avini had never made a film before the revolution, he was nonetheless very well acquainted with the history of cinema and cinematography. By the time of the victory of the revolution, Avini himself also underwent an interior and ideological revolution, which resulted in him burning and destroying all of his writings. Regarding this period of his life, he says, Today I'm talking with you from the end of a traversed way. I have an MA degree in architecture from the Faculty of Fine Art of the University of Tehran, but whatever I do today has no connection to the knowledge I gained at university. All that I do today I learn outside university. Soon after the revolution in 1978, and like many other fresh believers in the Islamic revolution, he began his work in the former construction jihad organization, aiding poor Iranian villagers living in inaccessible areas in Iran. He says, We went to the villages to dig with a spade in the way of God. However, instead of a spade, they put a camera in my hand. In practical terms, 
This formed the beginning of his work with the camera and cinematography. Later, he continued his work in the Jihad Sazandig office in Iranian television, but he and his volunteer friends, who were to later become his crew, soon understood that with their idea and ideology regarding documentary filmmaking about the war and the war fronts, they could not work with governmental organizations and institutions. However, at the same time, they never cut their contact and collaboration with them. Avini and his crew created a conditional position for themselves, suspended between governmental and non-governmental organizations, in order to enjoy greater flexibility and freedom in doing all things they wish to. Avini believes that without this suspended position that they created for themselves, they could never have made the narration of Terium, Revayat Fat series. Creating such a documentaries about the war fronts necessitated their readiness to depart for the fronts at any moment, something that the structure and discipline of governmental organizations would not have permitted them to do. The Revayat Fat group was created by 52 people from among the Jihad Sazandegi, Sepahe Pastoran, Basij, and Iranian TV personnel. From the beginning of their work on the war fronts until the death of Sayyid Murtaza Avini, they yelled more than 10 martyrs. In the Revayat Fat series, he and his crew made a total of more than 70 documentary films about the war, the war fronts, and the lives of soldiers, it means Basijis. In 1992, Sayyid Murtaza Avini began the production of second series of Rivayat Fat. He died as a martyr on April 9th of 1993, his death caused by the explosion of a landmine while making a documentary about soldiers missing on the former war fronts in Fakke, which is situated in the southwestern Iran. He was subsequently laid to rest alongside the numerous martyrs of sacred defense in the Behisht Zahra Cemetery in the south of Tehran. And before going to front for this second project, he says, you may not know where I'm going. I'm living for Fakke, where our combatants witnessed how the angels were delivering the martyr's soul. Namely, the Rivayat Fat series is based on improvision vis-a-vis -vis an assortment of objects and characters in the films. At the war fronts, they had neither sufficient time or the technical possibilities to make their film in a natural way or following a normal process. To this, we should also add the special conditions found in war and at the war fronts which involved the rapid escape of events and subjects. In this regard, Avini says, in order to make real documentary films about our war fronts, we needed people in our group who had a genuine attachment to our sacred defense, the Fa'e Muqaddas. For this reason, we needed people who were firstly Basiji, so that their souls were rooted in the reality of our war. Secondly, they should be familiar with the filmmaking. In the beginning, finding the combination of these two elements in one person seemed impossible. But little by little, we learned how we could find and educate our crew. During the first days of the war and the beginning of their work, the structure of Avinis group resembled that of others, like group for make films, being composed of a film director, a cameraman, a sound engineer, and two assistants. They soon came to understand that in order not to lose their subjects and the special moments of war fronts, they could not have a screenwriter, a film director, and a cameraman. In such a situation, the screenwriter, film director, and film editor, sorry, a film director, all are in a cameraman. In such situation, I repeat, in such situation, the screenwriter, film director, and film editor should all be combined in one person, it means the cameraman. Well, all these attributes were united in, united in one person, the cameraman should select his subject and characters, bearing editing regulations and decoupage sequences in his mind, and begin to capture his image. The fourth day of attack, 
is a manifestation of one such experience. Avini says, under normal circumstances, cameramen always have time to think and change their ideas and to select their characters and their positions. However, our cameramen at the war fronts not only did not have enough time to make these choices, but also had to present all of their images in an artistic way. At the war fronts, a cameraman could not halt or control the rhythmic of events and, his, and he desired, as he desired. It is he himself and his camera that should be fast, and again it is the cameraman who should adapt himself to the events and actions of the war fronts, following the movements of soldiers, learning about military tactics such as attack and counter-attack, and at the same time performing his job as a cameraman. For a long time, the camera was an exterior and non-functional tool for the cameraman of the Revayatifat group at the front line, Khata Aval Yachat. For example, when a mortar shell exploded near our cameraman, in a natural human reaction, they stopped their work to see where this explosion had occurred. It took at least four to six years of hard work at the war fronts before I felt, Avini says, that our cameramen had found their personal visual style and language. And that was only because the camera had become as a part of their body. Elements such as much work, movement and walking at the same time as the soldiers, the natural and sudden reaction of the camera, the special view of the camera from the interior to exterior, close shots and camera angles, discovering the specific personal psychology of their audience, and creating more real and naturalistic sequences made Revayatifat more realistic. During editing, I could really recognize the personal feelings of our cameraman. On the editing table, I could recognize who was the cameraman of which film from their personal style and characteristics. The Revayatifat series is generally edited in two different ways. Most of the films are edited in a descriptive way, namely descriptive editing, Tadvina Tosifi, which means that the films present moments on the war fronts with the same rhythmics and movements of the cameraman. Here the role of editing is minimal, and an attempt is made to preserve images with the natural movement of the camera. For example, in this category, one can mention the full theory of attack. The other type of editing is subjective editing. As one may imagine, this entails films being edited regarding a particular subject or topic pre-selected, according to a special interest. In this case, it is the subject of the film that will connect each of its sequences. In the series of films, one can mention the army, the people and Karbala, Sepah Mardon Karbala, and three pages of the history of resistance, Sesafe as Tariqe Mugavimah. Concerning the use of music in the Revayatifat series, Avini explained, we cannot use music in our films because music is by its nature a complete art and does not need to be connected to any images. The influence of music is completely different from and more direct than the other elements of the films, such as special Interviews were one of the best ways in which our audiences could connect themselves to the reality of the war fronts and the spirit of the soldiers who were on the first lines of attack, Avini says. To gain access to soldiers' soul, we should wait for special moments when they could express their real feelings. These moments were precisely the moments of counterattacks or advances toward the Iraqi fronts. Another duty of the cameraman was to act as an interviewer to create real history for the audience. The aim was to oblige soldiers to talk directly to camera rather than the crew. Through this method, the audience could feel that soldiers were speaking directly to them. Avinis crew also removed the microphone from their image because they believed the microphone and camera to have a direct artificial and psychological impact on soldiers. 
pressuring them to say something unreal or illusory regarding the reality of the sacred defense. In the Rivayat of Ad series, beside interview, there is also a deeply mystical narration to the films. Generally speaking, Avini believed that a documentary film, and especially war documentaries, should function without any narration, and that narration should come to aid of images when pictures alone are insufficient or unclear. He says, as no camera can capture and present all the events and moments of the war fronts, which are surprising and wondering, we need to use a narration for these kind of images to make them real, touchable and more comprehensible. He also believed that narration was miraculous in being able to go beyond the surface of an image and attain its targets and objectives sooner than an image. By adding a literal and more mystical narration to particular images, he wished to render them more thoughtful and reflective. Narration in Revayatifat is mostly performed in a descriptive way and presents the events that we see on the war fronts. At the same time, the text of the narration attempt to establish a global connection between the events of the war fronts and the Islamic ideological theories of Avini, without resorting to any incorrect or empty slogans regarding the Islamic revolution and the sacred defense. In Revayatifat, the aim of the narration follows that of the images, namely calling on divine nature fetrate elahi present in each viewer, but paying particular attention that the narration does not become the central aim of the films. Avini believed that narration, like the other elements of a film, image, special effects, music and editing, has a special value and that during the process of filmmaking one should never surpass the limits of the value of each element. Thank you.